So what happened in here? It looks like a disaster zone. I am in a serious crisis mode. I just had a huge order of all sorts of cupcakes and cookies and bread, but I've run out of flour. I can't fill the order without flour. Okay, okay, try to calm down. I'm sure this isn't the end of the world. Oh, I have an idea. Hang on a second. Here you go. There's plenty of flowers here to fill that order. Oh, Hunter, I don't have time for your puns. I need baking flour. Well, no problem. I'll just run over to the store and get more flour for you. You don't understand. There is a huge flour shortage in town today. All the stores are sold out. What am I gonna do? Maybe you could give these uh, pretty flowers to the customers instead. Something tells me that it won't be the same holding a bunch of flowers when they'd rather be eating chocolate cupcakes with buttercream frosting. Well, why don't you just take a break for a minute while we try to think of a solution? Uh, do you have another Bible story for us today? Well, actually, my predicament with the flower shortage reminds me of the last story about Joseph and his family. There was a famine in Egypt. That means there wasn't enough food for everyone. Oh, well, no. That sounds even worse than not having cupcakes. It was. Lots of people would have died if it weren't for what God helped Joseph do. Well, now I'm in suspense. Do you remember our big picture question? I sure do. Is there anything God cannot do? Well, I'm pretty sure we've answered that question with a resounding no. That's right. The last couple stories we've heard have shown us that God can do all things according to his character. God is good, he is faithful, and he is in control. God works all things together for the good of those who love him. Joseph learned that lesson in Egypt. We've heard two really awesome stories about Joseph. He was one of the 12 sons of Jacob. We heard now Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery because they were jealous that Jacob loved him best. Last week, we heard how God gave Joseph power to understand dreams. Well, Pharaoh had some crazy dreams about fat and skinny cows. Joseph told him that his dreams meant that there would be seven years of plenty in Egypt and then seven years of famine. Well, today, we'll hear about how God sent Joseph to Egypt to establish a remnant. A, a, a remnant? Isn't that like a, like a famous artist? No, silly, not Rembrandt. A remnant is like a remaining amount of something after most of it is gone. In this case, it's a small group of people who survived when others did not. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I still don't understand that. That's okay. Today's story should help us learn more. Well, sweet. Well, we have a couple other things to do first, but we'll be right bake. Uh, I, I mean, back. Hey, Fielder Kids, you know what time it is? That's right, it's game time, where you put your skills to the test and enjoy the thrill of competition. So put on your thinking caps, pay attention, Try your best and let's have some fun. Get ready to play. Welcome to the first Fruit of the Spirit game. Remember that we are supposed to be showing the fruit of the Spirit in our lives so that we can grow to look just like Jesus. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now it's time to see if you can recognize what types of situations show the fruit of the Spirit. Here's how to play. We'll pick a fruit from the bowl, and each fruit will tell us about a situation. You'll have to decide whether it's a fruit of the Spirit or not a fruit of the Spirit. Are you ready? Here we go. Let's pick the cherries. The cherries represent love. It says, I help my sister do her homework. If you think helping your sister with her homework is an example of love, clap your hands. If you think it's not an example, snap your fingers. Great job! Helping your sister with homework is an example of love. Let's pick another fruit. How about the bananas? The bananas represent self-control. It says, you eat all the donuts. 
even though one was just enough. If you think eating all the donuts shows self-control, touch your nose. If you think it's not self-control, stick out your tongue. Good job! Eating all the donuts is not a way to have self-control, and it's way too much sugar. Now let's pick the orange, which stands for peace. It says, yelling at my mom or dad when I don't get my way. If you think yelling when you don't get your way is an example of peace, then pull on your ear. If it's not showing peace, then wiggle your nose. Congratulations! You know that yelling when you don't get your way is not a fruit of the spirit. Let's move on to the blueberries, which are about gentleness. It says, the school bully trips and scrapes his knee. I help walk him to the nurse's office while other kids laugh at him. If you think helping the school bully is showing gentleness, then wave hello. If you think it's not being gentle, then hold your chin. That's right, helping the school bully get to the nurse is being gentle. The melon represents faithfulness. Faithfulness is when you keep doing something you said you would do, even when it's hard to keep going. So the melon says, my favorite TV show just started, but I finished my chores first because I said I would do them right away. If you think finishing your chores because you said you'd do them is showing faithfulness, then raise both your hands. If you don't think it's being faithful, then touch your knees. Great job. Finishing your chores like you said you would is being faithful. Thanks for playing the Fruit of the Spirit game. I hope you play again soon. Hey guys, the song we're going to do now is called Rock This Boat, and it's based off of one of my favorite stories in Scripture, where Jesus is walking on water and Peter sees him. And Peter's heart desires to be where Jesus is more than anything else, more than maybe the fears and concerns he has in his heart, even more than what he thinks his friends are sitting there thinking like, you're crazy, sit down. But I loved in his boldness that he asked. He said, Jesus, I want to be where you were. And Jesus said, come here. So he made everybody else uncomfortable. He even had to deal with his own discomfort. But he stepped out of that boat and he got to walk on water. So this song is going to go like this. During the chorus, it's going to say, I'm going to rock this boat. So you're going to pretend like you've got an electric guitar and you are playing it with all you've got. So it's going to go, I'm going to rock this boat. I want to walk on water. Goodbye yesterday. Sail away. Spin around because it's a new day. And I'm going to leave this boat. So look out because, Lord, I'm coming. There's no more time to waste. Here I go. I'm going all in. The rest of it, we're just going to be filling the music and clapping our hands and having a great time preparing our hearts to trust Jesus and step out in faith. <laughs>
to God's Word is one of my favorite things to do. If you have it handy, grab your Bible and let's focus on some amazing truth from today's lesson. Listen closely, keep your ears open for the things that point you to Jesus. Jacob and his family were in trouble. They did not have enough food to eat. No one had enough food to eat. So when Jacob learned that there was food in Egypt, he sent 10 of his sons to buy some grain. His son Benjamin stayed home. In Egypt, Joseph was in charge of giving out food. The brothers came to him and bowed down. <gasps> Joseph knew who they were, but they did not recognize him. Joseph remembered his dreams of his brothers bowing down to him. Those dreams from long before were coming true. Joseph decided to test his brothers. I think you are spies, Joseph told them. You are here to spy on the land. But the brothers said, no, we are not spies, we are brothers. There were 12 of us, but our youngest brother is at home with our father and another brother is dead. Joseph put his brothers in prison for three days. Then he said, bring your youngest brother back to me to prove that you are not spies. But one of you must stay here. The brothers went home with food for their families and one of them stayed in Egypt. They told their father everything that had happened and their father was very upset. But when all the food was gone, Jacob asked his sons, to go back to Egypt. So the brothers returned to Egypt with their brother, Benjamin. They took money to pay for their food and they took a special gift for Joseph. Joseph invited all of the brothers to his home for a meal. After the meal, Joseph sent away all of his attendants. He cried and told his brothers, I am Joseph, your brother. You sold me into Egypt, but do not be afraid. God sent me here so I could save your people, a remnant from the famine. Joseph told his brothers to go home and bring their families back to Egypt where they would have enough food. On the way to Egypt, God spoke to Jacob in a vision. A vision is like a dream, but Jacob was awake. God said, do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you into a great nation there. I will go down with you to Egypt, and I will also bring you back to this land. Jacob's family was blessed in Egypt, but Jacob got older and died. Now Joseph's brothers were afraid Joseph would punish them for what they did to him. Oh no! Joseph said, you planned evil against me, God planned it for good, so many people could live. Then Joseph comforted his brothers and spoke kindly to them.
God had a plan for Joseph's life. He allowed Joseph to suffer, to rescue a whole nation. In a greater way, God planned for Jesus to suffer so that many people from all nations would be saved from sin. Well, I can't believe Joseph forgave his brothers like that. I think I'd still be angry at them. I mean, after all, the last time Joseph saw them, they wanted to kill him. True, but Joseph knew that God was in control the whole time. He trusted that God's plan for his life was good and that the Lord would bring something positive from all Joseph's suffering, and he did. Well, I guess it's a good thing Joseph was willing to forgive his brothers. Joseph was able to save his whole family from starvation. Well, and not just his family, but the whole nation of Egypt. Kind of makes me think that running out of my baking flour isn't such a big deal. I mean, at least we have other food to eat, right? Right. Well, God gave Joseph wisdom in how to protect the nation from the famine. Well, during all these years of good harvest, Joseph saved lots of grain in storehouses and cities throughout Egypt. Then, when the famine struck, he sold the grain to people all over Egypt and beyond. Well, that's some good thinking. <laughs> Still, I wonder if it was ever hard for Joseph to keep trusting God. I mean, after all, it had been decades since Joseph had been brought to Egypt as a slave. Do you think he ever wondered if God had given up on him? We don't always know right away why God allows us to go through hard times. We may have lots of questions that aren't answered for years, or maybe even ever, but we can trust that God's plan for us is good. He is in control and He will provide for us. And since He is a good and loving Father, He will always take care of us and provide for us. Exactly! God has provided for us in every way. The most important way God has provided for us is through Jesus. In fact, it was through suffering that God made a way for us to be freed of our sin. How did God use suffering to save us from sin? Well, God planned for Jesus to suffer so that many people from all nations would be saved from sin. Jesus is God the Son, and He died on the cross to re rescue us from our sin and rose again to prove His complete victory. Wow! Well, let's take a minute to review some of the details we heard. Why was Jacob's family in trouble? They didn't have enough food to eat. Where did Jacob send his sons to get grain? Egypt. What did Joseph's brothers do when they saw him? Well, they bowed down to him. What did Joseph claim that his brothers were? How did Joseph save his family? Gave them food to eat and invited them to move to Egypt. What well, great job! You know, it is beautiful to think that God is in control of our every circumstance. Nothing is too big for God. Well, remember that God told Abraham and Isaac long ago that their descendants would go to Egypt. Even in twists and turns in Joseph's story, God was working out his perfect plan. God is so good to always provide for us. Even if it means we have to walk through seasons of suffering or pain, God is always with us and will use even the bad things for his glory and our good. Well, hey, I just remembered something. Last week, I bought a ton of extra flour to make a cake for my mom. Well, I really overestimated how much flour I needed. I have lots of extra flour I can give you. Do you think six bags is enough? <gasps> yes, what? Yes, thank you, you've saved us. Well, before I go get the flour, how about we say a quick prayer? Great idea. Dear God, thank you.
you for this story of Joseph and how you used his suffering for the good of your people. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to bring us salvation and make a way for us to know you and be with you forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now let me run and get that flower. And remember, even when things get tough, life is what you bake it. <laughs> well, that's it for today, everyone. See you again real soon. Fielder Kids, you are sent. Thank you.